Hello friends, it's Eli, and I'm in my house, which is weird, and there's some kids laughing at me in real life and probably virtually at the same time. So uh, we're all stuck at home a lot, and I don't like being bored, so I thought about some activities I could do to entertain myself, and then I thought maybe you guys would want to share some activities with me, or maybe wanted some ideas for things to do, or maybe it would just be fun if we were all doing the same thing. So, to start, I was thinking about one of my favorite when I'm bored activities, which is folding things. Specifically paper. I don't fold other things. Like, you can't fold a chair. But you can fold paper, and when you fold paper, you can make things out of it. Like, paper which I love. I love paper airplanes. You can fold paper airplanes. And then if you get good at folding a paper airplane, you can make mini paper airplanes. And if you get good at mini paper airplanes, you can make extra mini paper airplanes, which really don't fly very well, but they are like the cutest thing. Look how, look at how adorable that thing is. Okay. So you can make paper airplanes. If you get really good at doing that kind of folding, you can make things like uh, cranes origami. And if you get good at that, you can make like mini cranes. Again, adorable because little things are always adorable. And if you get really good at that kind of folding, you can make way more intense things like, you know, a deer. That's cool. So we're going to start with paper airplane. And this is not any kind of like advanced paper airplane model. This is like the uh, most standard paper airplane, but we're going to talk about how to make this really standard paper airplane plane really well. And that comes down to folding. And if you're interested, and if people are like, oh man, this is cool, uh, I'm loving paper airplanes again, it's like they're brand new, and you want to learn more advanced paper airplanes, we can do that later. We can make other videos with like way more advanced paper airplanes. But for now, here's, here's the deal, the original. So, the most important part of folding a good paper airplane is the folding part. I guess the paper part too. We need paper, right? So where are we gonna get paper? So, if you're like me and you just bring things home uh, from wherever you are because you forget to empty your bag, or if you have a printer at home, uh, you might have some of this printer paper, ideal for making paper airplanes. When I was a kid, because uh, I'm, I'm that old, we didn't just have this kind of printer paper at school or at our houses. And so uh, our paper airplane making was a little different. But now this is everywhere, right? So we've got printer paper. If you have it, that works. If you don't, no problem. We can find other paper, like if you have school paper, like loose leaf, that'll work. Although, do we think these holes would interfere with making a paper airplane? think they would but some of it is real nicely it's got this red line we could just cut down this line and make our airplane the nice thing about paper airplanes is we generally want to start with like a rectangle although when we get into advanced paper airplanes you can start with other shapes but it doesn't matter that that rectangle is exact it just matters that it's sort of a rectangle also there's maybe a monster outside my window making noise or somebody sanding a pillar so we could cut this off and use it, and luckily it's got nice corners, which are important. Some loose leaf has these rounded corners, and if that's what you've got, you're gonna have to find a way to make another cut. I recommend uh, starting with a ruler to figure out where you wanna do that. But that'll work. If you have people at your house who like to draw, you might have one of these, right? Which is uh, a sketchbook full of paper. This paper is heavier than printer paper and so it folds a little differently and that's part of the weird thing about folding paper is that like all paper is just like a little bit different and when you're folding it I'm not actually folding this right now I'm why well, I am but along a perforation when you're folding different paper uh, it feels different in your hands and it folds different it's kind of like if you have um, multiple different uh, controllers for your video games and they all have like slightly different sensitivities 
they feel a little different and you have to get used to uh, the feel of different paper when you're folding it like the paper we make origami out of often is special paper that's really thin uh, and doesn't make great airplanes but we can make great airplanes out of uh, this paper and this paper and we can make great airplanes out of printer paper so let's just use this so we can see how it works so the key to a great airplane is that it's folded really carefully so that all of our folds are pre precise so that our paper airplane is symmetrical because every little bit of an airplane uh, that we change changes the way it flies and when it's asymmetrical when it's not the same on both sides um, it doesn't fly very well it flies weird so we want to we can uh, we can control that in the folding and so we're going to go over how to fold carefully and i know this seems weird uh, if you haven't thought about folding all that much uh, but it's really kind of like a little bit more complicated and the number one piece that's the most complicated is that you have to find especially if you're like me and you're not prone to patience you have to find some reserve of patience you have to decide you know what i'm stuck at home and i've got all this time in my hands so i might as well engage a thing more slowly and more carefully than I usually do. And so that's what we're gonna do with this folding. We're gonna take our time. We are not gonna whip this paper airplane up in 20 seconds and have it be all off center and not fly well. We're gonna do our best to really get on it. So, the basic paper airplane. Piece of paper, we're gonna fold it in half. You all probably know how to make this airplane. So you don't need the instructions on how to make it, you need the instructions on how to fold it. So we're gonna fold it down the middle. Right? So we put our piece of paper in front of us the wide way. And from the back, I like to roll my paper over. Now, what I've got is this kind of roll situation going. And my hands are placed really carefully. My fingertips are here at the front of the paper, and my thumbs, you can't see them very well because they're hidden, my thumbs are actually controlling the back here, the roll part because that's where I actually want to move my paper. Because what I'm trying to do on the front is line these top corners up. The first fold is really important. We need this one to go well. We need this one to be really good. So in order to get those corners lined up, I'm not pushing with these fingertips. I'm pushing with my thumbs back here. And if I put my thumbs lower on the roll and push and kind of squeeze my hands together, the top layer moves back. And if I put my thumb higher on the roll and kind of push, the top layer goes forward. So that's how I'm looking really carefully. Oh, I'm also like on a pretty flat surface, right? I'm looking really carefully at where these corners are and I'm trying to get them matched up perfect. And when I feel like they are matched up perfectly. Oh my goodness, okay, they're matched up. Now what I've done is I've pushed down with these front fingers. I'm holding it in place. My corners are where I want them to be. Obviously, I don't have a fold yet. I just have this big roll with my corners held together. Cool, I keep my fingers here. And my thumbs are gonna come kind of from the front and they're gonna roll back all and pushing down towards the table until I run out of paper. I run into the place where my fold has to be for my corners to line up. That's what's back here the end of the paper. So now, look at that, you can even see it. There's a little fold happening right here, and that fold is exactly where it needs to be. And from that fold, now I've got it, I can move my hands back, and from that fold, I can just whoop, whoop, fold around the rest of it. Because this set where the back of my paper was in order for my corners to match up. Now I have this perfect fold. Awesome, good start. Okay, next. You know the drill, right? Fold this down. Now here's a little trick, all right? I don't like to fold this next fold into a perfect triangle. I don't want it to meet all the way here because I know, I'm thinking ahead, there's gonna be another fold on top of it. And that next fold is gonna have that first fold stuck up underneath it. And if my first fold here goes all the way to the edge, there's gonna be a little extra paper that gets sort of like crumpled up inside of there. So this next fold, I'm gonna bring almost all the way 
to my center line, but not quite. I don't know if this camera will show that that is almost, almost all the way, but not quite. You might have to use your imagination to understand what I'm saying. This one too, almost all the way. Now what this is going to end up with, you might already be thinking about what this is going to end up with. Is this top point going to be pointy, all the way pointy, if I don't go all the way? It's not. It's going to be just a little bit flat at the top because I didn't go all the way to that middle. I've left myself some space for you know what's coming, the next fold to the middle. This one can go all the way to the middle. And you see I'm doing the same thing, right? Let's see it again. I'm taking this piece of paper. I know that this is going to fold. This edge is going to fold down to the middle, right? So I get it lined up and then look, my hands are doing the same thing they did in that first fold. I'm getting it lined up. My fingertips are lining up the front. My thumb is back here at the back. And when I've got it, I stick my fingers down because I know where it is and I push back the paper to get to where I run out of paper, where I know the fold needs to be. All right, we've gotten to this point. It's looking pretty good. Now we know what happens. We fold this bad boy in half, right? Fold it in half. There's names for all these folds too. Did you know that? The folds? It's cool. Who made the first paper airplane? Did they make it before airplanes? Was it like a paper bird? Because paper's been around longer than airplanes. Or was it not until there was an airplane that somebody was like, what if I made one of those out of paper? And who was that person? All right, I folded it in half, right? Triangle. I can open it up and remember what's inside. Here's my folds. Okay, now here's a tricky bit. Next, I'm gonna fold down to create the body and the wing of my airplane. And I often think, when I was a kid, I remember I used to try to make this line this fold line as straight as possible and as close to the bottom as possible because I thought I wanted the most amount of wing. And it turns out one of the funny things about paper airplanes is you don't actually want uh, all wing. You want some body. That body gives it some weight and some mass in the middle, which is really useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my fold line start a little lower towards the nose and go up a little bit towards the back on an angle. And so this one, this first fold, I'm not lining anything up. I'm just sort of eyeballing it. It's one of the cool things, right? Like every airplane is different. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, okay, I want my, my front to start about there. I want my back to be about there. Whatever it is you want. And assuming you have enough paper, it's super cool to make a whole bunch of airplanes and see what works better, right? Okay, I've made this fold. I just decided where I was going to make it. If I look underneath now, I can see my line. See how it's a little bit smaller? The body's smaller here in the front than here in the back? Because I made that angled line. I just decided where that was gonna go. Now it's there. Next. Now I do have to line something up. I flip my airplane over. Now I'm gonna make this next fold to make sure my body is the same size on both sides. My wings are the same size on both sides. I'm gonna fold my wing down on this side and I'm gonna line it up with my other wing. So again, same process where I'm using the fronts of my fingers to line the front of the paper up and decide where it's going to go. And then I push backwards to create my fold line. Okay. And now I've got my completed airplane. I might want to fluff it up a little. It turns out airplanes like to be a little bit sort of bead, not totally flat. But look, here's my airplane. I made one. And if we look at the folds, we can see we lined it up pretty good. It's pretty symmetrical, although I will admit, and I've been folding paper for like a really long time because I'm ancient, uh, it's not perfect. And it's never perfect. But now here I have an airplane and it's brand new. And if you were making one while we did this, you've got an airplane. You can look at this thing and you can say, here's a thing that didn't exist in the world before, but now it exists because I took the time to make something. Here's the thing I make, which always makes everything better. Everything's better when you make something. You brought something into the world. So here's my airplane. And if you want, you can get like cool with it. You can put like, you know, fold up the wings to get flaps. 
So I made one the other day and I was thinking about maybe a cool thing to do would be to decorate my airplane. And so I was wondering how would I know where the different parts of my airplane were before I folded it? Because if I unfold it and refold it, it might get a little funny. So I made another airplane and I colored it in. Check it out. Here's an airplane. And I colored the top of it red. There are the wings. And I colored the underwings orange, which looks a lot like red, which maybe wasn't the best plan. And I colored the body blue. And now this one I can unfold and I can look at. All right, I unfold it, I flatten it out. And take a look. It's so interesting. Here, the blue member was the body. The orange was the underwing. The red was the wing. But the wings were bigger than that. Where's the rest of the wing? There's the rest of the wing. How interesting that the outside of my airplane is almost all on one piece of paper. I wouldn't have known that if you had asked me that before I did this. I would have thought there was a little bit of both. But it's almost all on one side of paper except for these white squares. And then the other part from the outside are these not white squares that are almost the same size as my white squares, which means the outside surface area of my paper airplane is like almost exactly half my airplane, my sheet of paper. And that doesn't mean anything. It just is interesting. I mean, that sounds cool. That's interesting to me. All right. So now I took that one apart. We made some airplanes. Make some airplanes. Send me some pictures of them. Measure how far you can throw them. Do some experiments. Ask some questions. If that seems cool, make a mini airplane. That's cool, right? If that seems cool, make an extra mini airplane, which I'm telling you right now was not going to fly very well, but, but is adorable. Always adorable, right? Uh, and let me know if this seems cool, then we can do more. And if we do more, we could get up to things, you know, like cranes. I bet some of you have made an origami crane before. They're not that complicated, but they do take some patience. And if we do that, we could get up to, you know, things like deer. That's cool. All right. Cool.